Thanks for making it out today. There's a lot of people here. Uh, hope you guys are ready to, to, to learn some very interesting things uh, based on our research of search engine hacking. Uh, my name is Rob Reagan. This is Fran Brown. We work at Stack and Lou uh, doing security assessments. And we are the lords of the Bing. <laughs> 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 so basically, we set out to whoa, we set out to uh, improve upon search engine hacking, and we realized that most tools that exist were getting blocked. Uh, most tools, uh, <laughs> most slides don't work when you need them to. Uh, but we actually we realized that uh, we we thought it was a shame, really a crying shame that Google hacking seemed to be a dying technique. I, I had a bit of a weep. Uh, you guys, though, if you also weep with me, then you can stop now. There's no need to cry anymore because we are bringing it back. We sought out to make tools that don't get blocked. We sought out to actually make practical techniques that you maybe you don't actually have to go out and scan actively. You can just have something that's you know, running all the time and, and letting you know what happens. And uh, we also just wanted people to really think differently about the way uh, you approach Google hacking and also to blow your minds, as you can see by the icon. The nice blow your mind icon there. <laughs> so we uh, basically decided that Google and Bing were our favorite search engines. Uh, Yahoo is good and that's something we're going to explore more as well, but uh, what we focused on now was uh, these indexes, because they're the biggest treasure troves on the internet to find, uh, openly find free information on error messages that are occurring in websites, vulnerable software that's being used in websites, and really, like, like, like I said before, we just really thought it was a shame that uh, not many people you, you actively are using Google hacking to find this information, and uh, we're, we're, we basically decided that these crawlers are the best to gather uh, this information and they, they cache it so that it's forever available to you. And uh, How many people here uh, have done Google hacking before, are familiar with Google hacking? Yeah, I assumed everyone is. I assumed everybody, right? How many people have uh, Google hacked your company that you work for? Cool. How many people here have Google hacked a person? You can't Google hack a person, that's just stalking. <laughs> Um, you guys seem to be familiar with Google hacking for the most part. Um, the types of things we're looking for here is uh, just looking at the old Google hack database is uh, advisories, error messages, files containing passwords, things like that. Um, just as an example, looking for some uh, SQL errors being dumped to, dumped at the screen or some uh, uh, password lists in the URL. These are our new tools. These are the ones that uh, you're, you're going to use from now on. Basically, uh, we're, use, we're leveraging the Google Ajax API now that doesn't get you blocked. It doesn't violate terms of service if that's something you could, no one at DEF CON cares about that. You guys want to violate the hell out of some services. So uh, w these are the tools you're going to use because we have, we're utilizing the Google custom search engine. How many of you have heard, have heard of that? What it lets you do is create uh, customized search results. Let's say you only care about star, dot, uh, FedEx.com or something like that. Uh, that that's maybe you only want to see results that come out of that. You can set a Google custom search interface that will only give you the wild cards that you specify, and you can utilize that in our tools. And for the first time ever, we also re released a Bing hacking tool that actually will get vulnerability information. It's not just giving you kind of like passive uh, footprinting information. Uh, it's actually, we made a Bing hacking database that we converted uh, the traditional Johnny Long's Google hacking database from 2003-2004 to uh, you work with Bing and uh, enumerate uh, things such as URLs uh, from sites and also um, Bing has a feature that, that a lot of people I think don't know about that wanted to make you aware of that you can search by IP address. And this is really uh, interesting because you can see things like virtual host to IP address. You can see uh, like server farms that like rack, something like Rackspace that has a lot of domains all on the same IP address. 
Uh, I actually was talking to some people yesterday at Black Hat that they have done pen tests where they saw a site administrator actually hosting his personal site or porn site on cor corporate infrastructure. And no one knew about that because they kind of had that as a closely guarded secret, but Bing knew about it. So you could put in things like just the IP address of your, of your server and then see all the domains that are hosted on it that are publicly available. And we also, for those people that are, I, I know, I know all of you do, want to violate the hell out of some terms of service, uh, are releasing a script that everyone kind of knew was theoretically possible, I just didn't know of anything that was out there and available for you to use that would uh, utilize a list of open proxies that are known to work to just pull results from Google. And this will indefinitely dump millions of URLs uh, for whatever type of information you're trying to scrape. So either have an army of people ready to analyze it or be ready to write your own tools to analyze it because uh, it's something that's, that's just going to give you massive amounts of information. And it also uh, uses, utilizes some things that we found uh, deep in the Google documentation such as uh, the user IP query string parameter. That lets you, basically it's designed for the, the AJAX API and it's designed for people that are embedding widgets in their site that, that kind of makes them the middleman proxy between their client users and then uh, that people that want to search that site using Google. And we just can specify a random value for that to reduce getting blocked by Google. Also it scrapes the mobile interface, which is what, you get, what you, comes up automatically based on your user <coughs> agent when you hit Google from your iPhone or your Android phone. And that we're, we're utilizing because it seems to have less re restrictions on getting you blocked. It also is very lightweight. It has nothing, nothing like advertisements or other superfluous links that you uh, would be a m more overhead in, in scraping this type of information. Um, so just a little background on this. Um, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, the Google SOAP API, uh, they stopped issuing keys back in like 2006. And, most of the existing Google hacking tools that kind of uh, hobbled along until then uh, finally just all stopped working last September when Google finally closed that down all together. Um, we, our uh, primary tool uses the Google Ajax API as we mentioned, uh, which is the approved way of doing it, but it does have several limitations, um, notably of which is um, that it limits you to 64 results per query, which is fine if you're just trying to Google hack a small company or something along those lines. It does make footprinting uh, using uh, Google pretty much impossible. If you want to enumerate uh, URLs of an application you're trying to footprint or domains for your company, uh, 64 results is going to limit you. While, whereas Google Scrape Diggity, while violating terms of service probably, um, is, uh, yeah, will give you a thousand results just like the web interface. So it's a primary reason for doing that. Um, as we see on that, that right there, um, how many of you guys are familiar with Scroogle? Anyone use Scroogle? few people, but uh, that kind of inspired us for this and they, uh, they found other interfaces that were stripped down, didn't have advertisements that are easy to scrape. Um, this is just one here. They, they shut down the, the old interface, but this is uh, just using Windows, uh, or actually scraping Windows Mobile, or Windows Mobile, Google Mobile, uh, which is a nice stripped down interface, easier for us to scrape. And like we said, for the first time ever, we've created a Bing hacking database uh, that would actually give you good vulnerability disclosures from Bing. Uh, a lot of the disparate features between Google and Bing made it so that the known, known Google hacking queries didn't work. It's things such as in URL uh, you can't use in Bing. So, but there are substitute features if you read into the documentation, things like in anchor instead of in URL. And uh, uh, things like the file type are very limited in title. And, uh, but, the, but basically this is just something we made for you to utilize and we're, and we're giving away uh, for free uh, via our website. Yeah, so we have close to a, a thousand uh, queries in the Bing hacking database now and to my knowledge I, I haven't seen any. The limited amount of Bing tools we've seen in the past have just been strictly footprinting type tools and not actually finding vulnerabilities. And we're also giving away the Stack and Lude database, uh, which is just a, uh, a list of queries we compiled from forums and, and kind of underground uh, lists so that, that uh, were beyond the Johnny Long Google hacking database and the Foundstone database. And it's also stuff that we actually have an intern actively adding to. Chain to a desk. Yeah, just right banging now, out queries. stuff, interesting searches from Google all day. And uh, he's also working on, on some other stuff uh, from Google Code Search, which I'll tell you about a little bit later. So we're not happy just giving you the old stuff converted. We're uh, going to be continuing to develop new regexes and adding them to this. Yeah, like this first one here, this first example, actually I found uh, sites that 
they were giving away, or they had exposed to the internet their salary information. Basically, their, their pay band of what employees make what amount. Like, that's definitely a sensitive information leak that you don't want on your website, and you could use this search to find it in Google's index. So now we're, we're going to demonstrate some of our tools to you. Uh, we, we, took all, we, we basically decided that all the old tools that we didn't want to use anymore needed improved upon for several reasons. Uh, and we came up with this user interface to utilize uh, our, our new techniques on Google and Bing. They pre-ship with the Foundstone database, the Google Hacking database, and the SLDB, and uh, allow you to do things like multiple domains. Uh, that was one thing that, that, all, that all the previous tools didn't do. You had to do one domain at a time, which is completely unrealistic if, if you're actually uh, trying to monitor a company of any sort of size. Uh, most of our clients are uh, Fortune 100 companies, and, and uh, one, of, one of them has 700 domains. It's just completely unrealistic to say, I want, I want to do one at a time. And uh, you can also plug in the Google Custom Search key that's provided, as I mentioned before. That, that allows you to filter your, filter your results just down to things you care about. Yeah. And uh, so basically for that client, we created a Google custom search engine that just filtered on those 700 domains. Then they could just check every box and just run it against that and, you know, make it a lot easier for them to Google hack themselves. But um, on a uh, unrelated note, how many people are tired of looking at socks that are just normal and you want to get to socks that have pictures of wolves on them or clothes that have pictures yeah. of wolves on them in general? You, got, you have some wolf wardrobe? Yeah, and, I know uh, you do. Yeah, wolf sweaters. <laughs> just as a good... <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the funnest things about doing, doing uh, s s looking, is just looking at these results. Uh, one of the searches looks for uh, OpenX uh, shopping cart, open source so shopping cart software that's uh, known to have several vulnerabilities in it. And we uh, found a website that actually specializes in selling clothing with wolves on it uh, that's using that shopping cart. So if you want some free wolf clothes, go to wolfpeople.com <laughs> and uh, you'll be stocked with all the wolf socks you can possibly have. <laughs> Look at that. Even for the children you use socks. They get them early. But yeah, so basically the, the fact that the powered by Xcart uh, shopping cart software that's going to have vulnerabilities in the page was what Google finds and uh, as, it's, as it's indexing the, the content of the page and then allows us to generate queries to find vulnerable software in use. Yeah. So we got Bing. And the Bing interface, actually, you have to have a, a SOAP key. You can just, and we actually provided a link for you to go to the site and associate your Hotmail or Live account, or whatever Microsoft Passport account you have, just make one up, and uh, you'll, they'll issue a key for free. And you just need to plug that in. And as I said before, uh, Bing has a really nice feature that allows you to search by IP address. And as someone that does network risk assessments, uh, a lot of times we don't even get domain names. We get uh, you know, an IP address range. So you can plug in IP addresses there up in the, in the top right uh, via, you can either specify one at a time, a, a, a start IP, dash end IP, or a class. And it'll enumerate uh, all of those four sites and then dump the results from whatever Google queries you're specifying. We also allowed you to specify any queries appended to the end of all of the things loaded in via the flat files, which you can go to the file menu and also load in your own flat file if you have some awesome Google hacking queries that you want to keep secret or if they're just something that, you want, that maybe no one else cares about you, that you just want to use to ha uh, monitor your sites or whatever you're interested in. And uh, also on the simple tab, there's just an interface to plug in uh, any query you want that would be akin to uh, just hitting the web interface, which I think most people do now. Yeah, so again, uh, this is just the, the Bing interface and to show that uh, Bing does have tons of information about uh, vulnerabilities. Um, just doing a, a simple search on entitled Snap Server will give us, you know, some Snap Servers online. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, you're hitting someone's web storage just by finding this and able to look through their information. Cool. Oh, and uh, last but not least, uh, this is still in prototype phase, but the Google Scrape Diggity. Uh, just to kind of illustrate, uh, we could take in uh, either a query or a query file full of uh, regexes from the Google Hack database, uh, a list of uh, Google servers, proxy lists, max results, and just to show you to enumerate them for footprinting purposes. Um, oops. Uh, there's a quote at the end of the Perl file extension. Yeah, this, the, I mean, obviously we're not going to demo downloading th millions in, of URLs right now, but this is something that can go beyond the uh, AJAX API 64 result limit 
Uh, yeah. So we see 73 results here, clearly above 64, and you, utilizing it in a... Uh